Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 44 of the Intermission Podcast, the show where two film graduates discuss classic, iconic, and obscure films from times gone by. We're your hosts, Oscar W. Fitchett. I'm Robbie Tweedell. I'm also here. I'm so excited about a new season. I've I've got nothing else to do with my time. Please help me. <laughs> Please season, let me do anything. Season, f- season five is is uh, we're, we're gearing it up. Season five, we're gearing it up, and we're gonna go write it. We're gonna go flooring it. Oh, I'm yeah. interested what I'm interested what people's opinions on this season's going to be. I will admit, oh, okay. I will I will be interested because when when looking back through what I've got scheduled yeah. for each week. I feel like this is going to be the the most the the one that people are going to just know the most of. I feel like every other episode, people are going to be like, "What the fuck's that? <laughs> like, okay. What the fuck's that one?" Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll see. Well, there's enough like in there. Gonna, there's enough in there that I people mean, are going to be like, "I've seen the Shawshank Redemption." Yes, oh, it's going to be oh, that. There's going to oh, be. You should have done. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey, so yeah, we're we're back to another season. I don't know. I feel like it. Should, we should be a bit more like. But I don't know. I feel like we should well, just yeah, let yeah. the season like speak for itself and just see what happens. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, do you want to? Uh, I mean, I can start it off with something fantastic that's just popped up on my phone as a as a notification. If you want, if you want to do that, I'm just you know, it's just on. an option for you. Go. Oh, oh, um, go on. So as we as uh, as most nerds will know, uh, it's CinemaCon at the moment. Um, and whilst we're recording right. this panel, um, is the Warner Brothers uh, panel. Uh, whilst we're recording this podcast, the Warner Brothers panel is going on. Um, I've just had a uh, notification pop up because I've got updates. So if something comes up that I think is is noteworthy, Worthy. I might pop in and just say, "Hey, just so you know, guys, this has just been announced or whatever." Um, <laughs> uh, they've just done the the Wonka portion of the. Oh panel. yeah, obviously a film that we're all very excited about. Oh no! Uh, unironically, uh, yes, yeah, I am. Director of Paddington, Timothy Chalamet. What more could you want? Yeah. And now, yeah. here's to make it a little bit better for you. Guess who's playing an umpa lumpa in the film? Um, is it Nick Frost? No, Hugh Mungo Grant <laughs> is playing an umpa lumpa, uh, and that's fucking brilliant. So, so, way to start off the season with a bit of you know positivity. One more thing. I, Should we? Sh- um, I'm uh, sorry. Just stay before. Go on. <laughs> I've got one more thing now. It's go got, on, go got, on. It's got another notification on my Snapchat. Um, I've got a Snapchat from my AI. <laughs> Is what, is what that says. I don't know what the fuck that's about. It just says my AI has Snapchat me. What does it say? Hi, Robbie. I'm your new AI chatbot. I don't. Oh, that's you scary. can ask me just about anything, and I'll do my best to help. I'm always here for a laugh, and you can give me a name if you'd like. Is there anything I can do for you today? Can I just say fuck off, Jarvis? Is that is, is that allowed? I would say, isn't that how her started? You're going to fuck your phone. What the fuck is this? Is this like a real thing that Snapchat is just doing now? I don't know. Well, I haven't got that. Oh so I don't God. know what... Well, I'll save her for later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're off to a good start. This is why I take your face and Photoshop the her poster. <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> please, on a lonely night... Please don't do on a lon- that. On a lonely night in Leeds, Robbie uh, turned to his <laughs> to his bedside table to see uh, his AI on Snapchat. Julia wasn't picking up the phone, but the AI was. <laughs> it's fucking terrifying. Why does that exist? <laughs> Why is that a thing that exists? Anyway, yeah, we're here to talk about movies. God, I love, uh, God, I love movies. But, I, but another thing I think we should do, I just want to like, you know, because we haven't touched upon this in some time. I want to like let let's let's reacquaint ourselves with the team system. Oh yeah. For any for, for just I just think of, you know start the new season. Let's refresh ourselves on who's team Robbie, who's team Oscar, and who's team Lewis. Yeah. Those sad bastards. Yeah. Team <laughs> those Lewis those, those fucking losers. Fucking weirdos. <laughs> Pick a team Lewis. Ugh. Lewis. Guy of all sucks. people. God. Damn. He's not even the guitar player in his band. He's the bass player. Oh my he's the God. bass player. Everyone knows bass players are knobheads. They're not cool. No, they're not cool. They're not like proper like. They're just like boom, boom. Yeah, I mean you've hit the nail is, on the head, mate. You you got is, you got him. Is, <laughs> is, is is Flea the only cool bass player? Yeah, probably. But it, is it's not... Flea even cool? Is Flea yes, even yes, cool? Flea's cool. He's in he's in movies now. He's he's, he's tra- always been in. He's movies. transitioned, Danny. He was in. He was in. 
Mine own private Idaho in 1991. He's been. <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? I've never well, yeah. seen it. Keanu's best performance, may I add. Um, you haven't seen The Matrix Revolution, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse yeah, you. You're, yeah, you're right. I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, I have. You're right. I haven't seen The Matrix Revolution. Or the Resurrection. Oh, you oh sorry. B- no, I did mean Resurrections. But yes, I mean, any of the Matrix sequels will do, won't it? Well, I've only seen the first Matrix, and that's all I give a shit. Ch- yeah, yeah, d- yeah, that's fine. I didn't even really care that much about the first Matrix. So. Ah, it's pretty good. It's not. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> okay. it's, not my, it's not my cup of tea. But not your cup of tea, as Spike Lee would say. It's not, not my, my cup, cup of tea. Of tea. <laughs> <laughs> then he, then he the cup wa- of tea. <laughs> Waluigi's out of there. Off he goes. So, to refresh ourselves. Um, yes. On Team Oscar. Yeah. We've got, uh, we got the, hey, we've got the, uh, <laughs> we've got the assigned right-hand man of Team Oscar, which is Angus Moore. Um, mm. We've got Gary Bradshaw, also known as, uh, the Tom Hagen of Team Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, oh, Angus, Angus was the uh, Sonny. Angus was the Sonny calling on. Um, uh, Finley Myers has, has yeah, always I just been in Team Oscar. No idea, no idea what that's about. I'll be he having words for, with that. He voted, he voted on the very first poll, I think, just to go <laughs> to you. And then I, and he never touched the poll again, So, which means he's always Cano- remained Team Oscar. Um, canonically... He is Team Oscar. Uh, Kate Oakey, Team Oscar. Uh, we got Rob Heselton, also Team Oscar. No uh, idea. Second, second year film. Oh, yeah. Is that, yeah. Sorry, um, man. <laughs> I didn't know you said uh, that. Uh, Geraldine Fitchett, my mum, is Team Oscar. Boo. So she be. <laughs> you just boo my mum? No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fitchett, I didn't mean. Uh, Jess, Jess May. Cafe de Morzone. Ca- Cafe de Morzone, Jess May. Uh, George Dixon is yeah. Team Oscar. Emphasis um, on the dick. Hey. <laughs> I think uh, he's, not far, he's not far from you now. I could have just... <laughs> yeah, I know. He could just come around and knock me out if he wanted to. <laughs> and leave. Uh, Maisie Rooney, Team Oscar. Um, yeah, lovely lovely and- girl. Yep, and Reese Bruce film account is Team Oscar. Yeah, well, and, uh, and the reason why I preface that is because over on Team Robbie, Reese Bruce private account is Re- Team Reese Bruce Ro- co-op is, account. Is, is, <laughs> <laughs> so Reece, you, can cut, you can cut that out. <laughs> I'm absolutely not cutting that out. Why would I cut that out of all things? <laughs> So you say Reese Bruce love Bethany's team Oscar, but Reese Bruce co op is team Robbie. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I would I would imagine he's a different kind of guy at work. I, I don't ho- know. I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was I talking to him the other. I was talking to him the other day, and he was telling me just about his attitudes towards like <laughs> work in there. And I'm like, oh God, Jesus Christ! If you said that to someone, oh yeah, oh Reese. Uh, but like one thing I realized is like uh, you know what that's a that's a nice strong team Oscar but mm. also we dwindled a bit towards the end of season four and I and I'm you know what and I'm and I and I don't like it I don't like the defectors mm. defecting team Oscar for no reason whatsoever yeah. um, but on team Robbie this is team Robbie the the biggest of the teams of everyone you're damn right as I said Reese Bruce private yeah we got um. We got a uh, Tyler McCulloch. Yeah, team no, captain. A, team captain. The 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 Angus to your the <laughs> Angus to the Angus. Well, Angus is to Team Oscar. Tyler is to Team Robbie. That's this is, what that is. This is true. Uh, Ryan Tomlinson, Team Robbie. Yeah. Um, you got Sorry. Sam Clark. <laughs> yeah. I do. I like to uh, apologise to him every time he's mentioned for baning his life for the last you know twelve years or whatever. <laughs> Uh, we've got Sam Clark on Team Robbie. We've got yeah, um, Ad- Adam Store on Team Robbie. We got um, yeah, great bloke. girlfriend. We got a girlfriend of the podcast, Julia Colley. Yeah, love that guy on Team Robbie. Maddie Tweedale. Yeah, she jumps ship. 
she jumped ship from Team Oscar. A long time Team Oscar member until she yeah, just decided, I mean, you know what, maybe <laughs> I should go with my brother. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's up to her. Um, she'll probably go back. I imagine she will. We'll see what happens at the end of this episode. Yeah. Because I'm going to put out... Uh, we got uh, Ellie Cutmore again. Jump ship again. Great success. I confronted her about it. She just laughed at me. Yeah. I should. I went like... I went, what the fuck? You went, you went from Team Roscoe to Team Robbie. She just, it was more of a nervous laugh, though. So I'm not, oh, okay. it was, I think she found it funny, but then she saw I was like pissed off about it. So, uh, so she got nervous and, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's what Team Robbie's all about. I don't know what that says about me, though. What, that you were genuinely I mean, upset about? <laughs> no, no. That, no, that she's getting, that she's nervously laughing about me. <laughs> oh, going I see like, what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Take a long, hard look at yourself, mate. Um, Eddie Hone. Yep. Cousin. Yep. Um, don't know why that made me laugh. Just, yep. Cousin. Just. <laughs> yep. Cousin of the podcast. Um, um <laughs> is that everything of the podcast? Is that what it is? Yeah. Now? Every, um, everyone gets a title. Um, Ethan Strachan is team Robbie. Um, I'm not going to give him Ella, a title. Ella Berry is team Crocs, Robbie. Crocs of the podcast. <laughs> I, d- I did. I didn't know you were gonna say. Cro- I just. I thought you were gonna crock a shit. Like I thought you was gonna. Go- I was thinking, be like, what the fuck? Imagine she's a she's a lovely person. Imagine just being like, what a crock of shit <laughs> for no reason. Ella Berry's on team Robbie. Crock of shit. That yeah. one. <laughs> what a <crock> of shit. <laughs> Boo. I'd rather but not Crocs be on it. But Crocs on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Crocs um, on the podcast. Um, and Leo Bradley, boyfriend of the podcast, <laughs> was on Team Oscar. Podcast. Was on Team Oscar, jump ship yeah. Team Robbie. I don't, you know, look, I understand that he's known you, like you've known each other for longer. I understand that. Yeah, quite a right? while. I, just, I understand that there's a stronger bond between the two of you than there is to me and him. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, but yeah. also, but also, if it wasn't for me, he would not have uh, been living out his dream of being in scaffolding, watching wrestling. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, it was putting a real strain in our relationship um, <laughs> with him being in Team Oscar. It just, it, you is know, that... we weren't sleeping Border... the same at night. Pulled on one side, I was like, look, Leo. Yeah, no, well, he kept, he kept, like, usually we'll cuddle for a while, and then he just started just rolling over, <laughs> like, facing the other way from me, like, and I don't know, I, I confronted him about it, he said he was just embarrassed, and he, you know, I was like, ah, you know. It is what it is, mate. Just, just, just make it, just make it right, and we'll be fine. Now we're cuddling all the time. And on Team Lewis. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. There's another, there's another team of fucking losers to talk about. And and, and, and Team Lewis, there's, there's like we got uh, we got Ethan McEwen. Yeah. There. Um, we got Joseph Caslin. Yeah. Don't, loser. don't believe it. Don't believe it. <laughs> and uh, and Connor Dorium. Can't believe it. The biggest loser of them all. I was talking to him today. He was talking to me like nothing had happened. Like we were still mates. <laughs> just like salty about it. Like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, just, all right, yeah. Yeah, it's all it's good, like, are we now? It's like you don't even know. It's because he'd put a, he'd put a photo on his Snapchat story where there was a notification. His, his lock screen is him and Sophie. Yep. And there was yep. a big notification covering Sophie's face. And so I, I sent him that bit from Monsters Inc., you know, <laughs> when Sully's there. And the, the look that's covering Mike. That Have you like, seen. It was the funniest thing in the world. Another point. Have you seen. Um, the, well, you probably won't have. I need to take a picture of this. Lewis, okay. Uh, the, the band Lewis is in, Thrones. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. They've got a. They, they updated their banner on Spotify. And oh, right. Lewis updated it, but he basically just Mike Wazowski himself. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's quite frankly, and you know what? I'm going to put in the intermission chat. So okay. Robbie, do, uh, so, so Lewis doesn't even, he's like, why is this in there? And then, <laughs> so just l- look at that when it sends, just cause it's the, f- it's just this. really amusing. Um, <laughs> still loading. Just uh, don't worry, everyone. We will get to the podcast in a bit, but we just, you know, it's not it's not an admission without a. We've got a well, um, we've got another bit of news from CinemaCon. Okay, what is that? Uh, they showed the first trailer for the Meg Two. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, all it literally, <laughs> all it says is, hang on. Um, first trailer it for the first trailer for the Meg Two: The Trench was shown at CinemaCon, which includes the return of Jason Statham as well as a T Rex being eaten by a Meg. There are now also multiple Megs. There were multiple Megs in the first movie. That was yeah, the there twist. Were, yeah, there was a- that was the, that was the twist of the first movie. That there was two of them. Why do I know that? Why do I fucking remember that? It doesn't matter. Look at the look at the. I'll put the. <laughs> let me re- let me respond to it because I've got that image ready to go at the minute. There we go. <laughs> For the YouTube list, for the YouTube viewers, I'll plonk that on there. Well, yeah, but, put a screenshot. But also, but also go to uh, ch- check out Thrones on Spotify. They've got some banger tunes on there. Uh, they, they've legit got some really good music. Um, nice. Is that Lewis responding there? Was that? Oh no, that's you. Just yeah, me. I did. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so awesome. with that being said, let me. Do you know what? I'll get. I'll get the new poll started for the intermission. Oh uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, let's do and that. We'll get, and we'll kick off this season by reevaluating the team members. I'm going to put a story on as well. Well, no, you can just share it. I'll, do I'll a tag separate, you in. I want to do a separate one. No, you just share it, Robbie. I won't. You can't make me. Well, you will. If I need to cut this out, I will. Because, like, this section coming up, because I need to, um, um, right. Kicking off. Season five. What team are you? And unlike last, and unlike last season, do you know what? Unlike last season, we won't do it so regularly. We'll do, yeah. We'll do, we'll do at the beginning of the season, maybe midway through, and then at the end. Yeah, that works. So we're uh, team Oscar, team not Tram Robbie, team Robbie. And then Tram Robbie. Team <laughs> Team Lewis. Should I put in brackets, would you dare? Could couldn't be me. <laughs> would you even dare? There you go. As if anyone would ever be. And let me tag you. Yeah. Now I can and put, Lewis. It, put it on my story. Where's Lewis at? There he is. Keep in mind, this is the official poll that will get used. Yeah. Not whatever. Not whatever you've posted. No, I haven't posted a poll. I've just put. You know, we're we're back. Oh, oh! I thought you meant like, yeah. Well, I'm going to put a poll on as well. I was like, why? What's the, no, no, I'm not putting doing? a poll. I'm not a buddy. I'm not a lunatic. And uh, <laughs> King of Season Five. What team are you? Okay. Share that to the story. Oh yeah, they're doing the. Doing the nun too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it says, is this the first trailer and an extended scene for the nun two were just shown, and it could be the scariest film out of the Conjuring universe yet. All right. I, I, I doubt that, man. The, the nun two was filmed in a real abandoned church in France. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> if you like. Uh, and then post that to my story, and we will revisit that. Within the intermission. Yeah, we'll look at it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right. And with that being said, with our incredibly on brand prolonged. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, to be fair, it's not as long as you. Well, maybe it is. It's 20 minutes. We've been recording for 20 minutes. <laughs> it's, pro- it's, a bit, it's a bit long. So, should we. <laughs> but before we get into the film that we're going to be discussing oh, yeah. this season, what could it a few be? Things to men- a few things to mention. Uh, as usual, as time goes in the description to see. To just see. Mm. Where um where you're at, if you're like fucking hell, these these lads are like going on forever. I just want to get to the film, just go to the description and skip all this bullshit if you really want. Um won't blame you. Um also all the social media links and all that in the description below for like letterboxd and Instagram. Instagram is where you can see um all the news that uh is related to the intermission, like what's gonna be the next episode and all that jazz. Yeah. And as always, 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 always. Uh, we are going to, um, uh, there will be mental health links in the description as there always is in these stuff, uh, as big advocators for the cause of looking after your own mental health. Uh, there's links in the description. Um, whether if you are going through a tough time or if someone, you know, is going through a tough time. So there you go. And 
Yes, Robbie. Oh, yes, son. Shall we get in to uh, this episode? Oh, fuck yeah. And the film that we are going to be discussing in this in this episode, Robbie, and kick it off season five, is the 1994 prison drama, The Shawshank Redemption. Uh, the film is directed by Frank Darabont, written by Frank Darabont, based on the novella Rita Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King. Uh, the film stars Tim Robbins, Morgan Freeman, Bob Gunton, what a name, uh, William Sadler, Clancy Brown, Gil Bellows, Mark Ralston, and James Whitmore, as Brooks is how it lists in the credits. Okay. Um, the plot synopsis of the film on IMDb is, over the course of several years, two convicts form a friendship, seeking consultation and, eventually, redemption through basic compassion. Bit of a naff. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know if that's true, but yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I claim the film holds as a 91% on the tomato meter and an audience score of 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Holds a 9.3 out of 10 on IMDb, placed at a number one in their top 250 films of all time. Also holds a score of 4.5 out of 5 stars on Letterboxd, placed at number 10 in their top 250 films of all time. It was nominated for one Grammy Award for Best Instrumental Composition Written for a Motion Picture or Television for Thomas Newman. Uh, nominated for one Director's Guild of America Award for Outstanding Directorial Achievement in Motion Pictures for Frank Darabont. Nominated for one Writer's Guild of America Award for Best Screenplay Based on Material uh, Previously Published, uh, also for Frank Darabont. Mm -hmm. It was nominated for two Screen Actor Guild Awards, uh, one for Outstanding Lead in Male Performance for Morgan Freeman and another for Outstanding Lead in Male Performance for Tim Robbins. It was nominated for two Golden Globes, including Best Screenplay, Frank Darabont, and Best Lead Drama Actor for Morgan Freeman. And it was nominated for seven Academy Awards for Best Original Score for Thomas Newman, Best Film Editing for Richard Francis Bruce, Best Sound, Best Cinematography for Roger Deakins. Best Adapted Screenplay for Frank Darabont. Best Lead Actor for Morgan Freeman. And Best Picture overall. So, Robbie. Mm. Shawshank Redemption. This, for me, uh, this is now my third time watching it. Uh, first time I watched it was um, uh, over a decade ago. And then I didn't watch it again since until last week when the original yeah. plot... <laughs> when we were going to record the episode and then things happened. Um, I apologize. I'll talk about it in the intermission section because it was awful. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, really? God, not good. <laughs> things happened. We had to just postpone it. But either way, that's what happened. So but so I rewatched it again yesterday just to refresh myself. So I've had a big gap with this film. And I'm sure like you, Robbie, I'm not for a certain generation, a lot of people's first knowledge of the Shawshank Redemption uh, if I feel like if you were born in the mid '90s onwards and you're trying to be a film fan, I think your introduction of Shawshank Redemption is you're looking through the IMDb top 250 and you're like, "Wait, what's number one?" <laughs> like, I uh, so this isn't this that wasn't my introduction to this movie. Uh, I'll oh, talk right. about it when I get to my bit, but yeah, mine's bizarre. But I'm so, but, but for me, it's like I remember like like I never even heard of the film until I got until I started being a little film and so I tried to get into being a film fan at 15 years of age mm. and you discover the INDB top 250 at 15 and you try to go, oh, which of the best films should I watch? And, you know, I knew of the, you know, I know The Dark Knight. I heard of, I knew of The Godfather. I knew of Schindler's List, Lord of the Rings, Good, the Bad and the Ugly. I heard of The Name, 12 Angry Men. I knew all these films, but the number one film was this film that I'd never heard of in my entire life called Shawshank Redemption. Like, all right. So that's why I watched it. Mm. Um... And first time I watched it when I was like 16 or so. Am I either 16 or 17? It's been, it was well over a decade when I first watched this. I really liked it. Absolutely. I really, really liked it. But it was never a film that like stayed in my mind to keep watching it. Mm. So, uh, I mean, funny enough, it was it, like, for a little while when I was like 16, 17, like 17 years of age, it would have been, it was like, in my top three of all time. Yeah. It was one of those, it's like, if if 17 year, if 2012 Oscar had letterboxed, his four favorites would have read like 12 Angry Men, Shawshank Redemption, The Dark Knight, and Donnie Darko. That's what. No, I, I want to kick that kid in the head. 
<laughs> that's that's what that's what the four films that are read there. Yeah, is, that's that's what my four favorite films. I think like my number six was Signs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, science um, is pretty yeah, great. Science is great, man. It was a great science time. Good ass time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so really like the film, and upon rewatching it, I, re- I, it's another film that I really, fr- really fucking like, and it actually helped watching it for a second time recently, like for a third time. Mm. So, and I'll get into that properly. But watched it for the first time in over a decade, a week ago. Really liked it. Watched it a week later. Liked it even more. Mm. So, nice. Robbie, your your thing with the Shawshank Redemption. Um. So similarly, I knew of it being uh, an acclaimed movie. It was one of them that my dad always talked about as being like, "This movie's great, and you should watch this movie at some point in your life." And I was like, "Oh, I'll, fuck, I'll get to it, all right." And <laughs> I put it off. Right. I'll tell you exactly why I put it off. Um. You know how, same reason I hadn't seen The Shine until quite recently, where I was oh, like, yeah. where I was like, I've seen it, mate. It's in every, it's been parodied a million times. It's it's one of these things where you just, it's so in the pop culture that yeah, you're like, well, why like, do I need to watch I'm, it? I'm like, I'm just ticking the box of seeing it, but like, I'd be watching it going like, and this is the bit where he does this, and this is the get busy living, get busy dying, etc. right? I'd seen it all, and I'll tell you why I'd seen it all, because... Uh, Family Guy did an episode where they parodied this movie. That was my first exposure to the story of this film. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit, it's where uh, they do Peter Griffin's Andy Dufresne. Um, right. Yeah, I the, think I know what you mean. The, yeah. the bit at the end where he's where he's bashing the pipe with the rock. Uh, yeah. Instead of listening out for lightning, the warden's watching Friends. And so, you know, the bit in the intro where it's like, no, I'll tell you, life's going to be this way. And it's like, do, 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 that bit. He like smacks the fucking paper out of the yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good jokes, everybody. <laughs> um, but eventually, I was persuaded by um, boyfriend of the podcast, Leo Bradley. In in, and y'all are gonna hate me for this because um, you would have thought I'd have seen this film before we knew each other. Oh no! I think you told me you. I, I think I think you told me when you first watched it. Yeah, I watched yeah, this yeah, in yeah. second year of uni because Leo yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Leo said. <laughs> to me, oh, I watched Shaw- uh, Shawshank Redemption last week. I was like, oh yeah, it's one of them where I should uh, I should get around to it. Have you seen it before? It's like, no mate, I'm the same as you. I've been putting it off because I thought I knew it. Turns out, it's fucking mint. Everyone's been right <laughs> <laughs> all this time. And I was like, yeah, well, I didn't think I didn't think everyone was lying. Like I imagined it was good. I'd just never seen it. So he was like, let's fucking watch it. So we watched it. Um, and yeah, it's great. And I'm like, why have I never seen this? It was one of them where I was like, why have I never? Why did I keep it, putting this off for so long? It's so good. It's like the like when I watched it yesterday. Like I showed, like I watched it with my mum because my mum had never seen it. And I think right. like when I watched it last week, I had on pause and my mum came in just to say good night. And she went, oh, what are you watching? And when I was Shawshank sure, Redemption. And she's yeah. like, ah, oh. she's like, ah, oh, I never saw that. You know, I've always heard loads about it. So I thought, oh well. And then I watched it, you know, that time again. And I thought, you know what? This actually wouldn't be a bad film to sit. You know, it's not a. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, I, so I said, oh, do you want, do you want to watch this? Mm. Watched it, f- film ended. I went, what did you think? She was it's really good. Really good film. And I went, mm. it really is just kind of like, it's like, yeah, obvious. You know what I mean? It's like one of those yeah, ones where you're watching like, yeah. it. Yeah, it, yeah. It's yeah, great. It's, it's, a, it's a damn good film. Mm. I don't, I don't necessarily um, personally relate to it. Or like, mm. it doesn't like really personally resonate with me loads. I think there's elements. I do think there's elements actually yeah, yeah. that, do like get me like oof to it but like uh it's one thing but weirdly enough it's not because anyone who's a viewer listener of the podcast knows that like with a film that i like it's almost like i can really like a film but if a film's really gonna like hit home for me it needs to like i need to feel something like almost like i'm personally like yeah relating or going through with it i mean this is you know there's a lot of shit that if you i mean if you listen all the way to these through these episodes you know you know the type of shit i like when it's like, oh God, yeah, I can see that. Or like, yeah, yeah, God, oh yeah, I feel that in my life. I don't necessarily have that with this film. But what's interesting is it's not even a film that I really like from like an analytical point of view. Cause I can just sit and just enjoy it. Yeah. And not and not be like, hmm, yes, it's it's very good from a very cinematic standpoint. It, it's is yeah. it, it is quite accessible watch, I think. Which is like even though like it is, like so, like cinematography wise, it's 
it's a stunning looking movie. It looks great. I mean, the lighting's news, great. News flash, Roger Deakins made a gorgeous looking film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sh- shock horror. It looks mint. Sorry, everyone. Uh, but like, you know, the way that he uses the bars in the prison. And the shadows light. are gorgeous in the shadows shadow, are, yeah. shadows are so good and the big wide shots that make everyone look so fucking small all the time are so do you know good what, do you know what i realized we, is missing mm. from from recent from from recent cinema yeah and, and, uh, and when look when looking back at like a good good old 90s drama which i will yeah. get because this is part this this i feel there's an art to a 90s drama that i think this hits perfection with yes. us, and i'll explain a bit later yeah um, i'll explain the pros and cons of a 90s drama and why this hits really home but yeah. helicopter shots yeah i don't know what it, i know we have the drones and they're really convenient they're really you know they're, they're a yeah. lot less they're a lot they're a lot more feasible yes but i don't know there's something really meaty and weighty about a helicopter shot that just makes you feel like god yes cinema <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right you are right it's like a, there's like a weird wobbliness to it that you yeah. don't you don't get that with a drone because it's like well this so has smooth. been this has been designed to be gyroscopic and blah, 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 and you're like well yeah but it doesn't have to fucking wiggle it's the first one that we get of like the big like when um Andy Dufresne's first go in it, like where like the yes. alarm bell sound, and we just get the. And yeah. It, well, we, well, we don't hear the because it's not meant to be a fucking. Yeah. But, you know, we just see yeah. this like big, like just sweeping shot, and we see like all the extras, and you go, "My God, what a!" Like, yeah. Imagine it looks great, but the sounds horrendous. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> I remember the film. <laughs> just drowning yeah. it out. <laughs> Right, I feel right. We'll try to break it down because I think there's a lot to talk about this film in terms of yeah, man. What 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 it what is good? Uh, you know, since we brought it up, we talk about the nineties drama and yeah, the pros and, like, of that. I don't know what it is. I I think I've recently discovered like like a good old nineties drama is probably what got is what I think of when I think of like <laughs> bless you, thanks, man. Is, is what I think of when I think of like oh yeah, a film. And what I mean by that is like I remember being a kid. And like being in Blockbuster or whatever, like in the early two thousands. But you know, like when you get like trailers on a on a tape or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And there'll be really cheesy ish trailers, but everything's really serious. And it's like, it's like Take seriously, damn it. It's like Touchstone Pictures. Yeah. Or, or just the the company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just the company in the nineties, and it's just like I don't know. And like, there's something about the film. There's something about the film. I don't know what it is. The film's yeah. stock of yeah, nineties yeah. film. It's like, well, example. If all about like Shaw Sharon Redemption, it's not a flashy looking film. If anything, it's quite bland color mm. palette wise. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't look unfinished. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's still like. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, this wasn't digital color graded, so they, I think they, it's more like they bathe the film in some like oh, okay. um, thing. That's how they color grade. That's how they used to color grade, where they would like develop the film and then like bathe in like a liquid or some shit to like make it pop in some, I think, from yeah. my memory. Um, but I still, but you know what? I'm, um, I'll save the cinema, you know. I'll save the technical side of things for oh, okay. for for another for another point. I would get my '90s drama thing <clears> out, <throat> the, out of the way with. Yeah. I think what this film does really well is because what makes a '90s drama. When I think of '90s drama, I think of like uh, a film that um, is c- could be melodramatic. Mm. Could be. Uh, it could be. Uh, it could lean on whimsy, even though it's dark and grim at times. Yeah, yeah. And there's always someone giving some inspirational thing. Yeah, you know something I mean? some about hope or whatever. And there's a, there's <laughs> always there's always a character giving a monologue about like why we should yeah. like breathe. Yeah. <laughs> you, know I mean? yeah. you know what I mean? There's always that. Or like there's someone giving like a monologue about why something's really important. Like I think like Tom Cruise and a few good men. Yes. <laughs> or or I think like you know, there's stuff like that, or like I think some of like the the court, like the, the the more procedural stuff, like primal fear. There's always some, you know, there's there's always some, and there's and there's a lot of that in Shawshank Redemption. But I think separates this from I don't know something like Shawshank Redemption toes the line so much of being melodramatic, but there's never a point of where everything feels too much. No, 
Like, it, like this film could have very well have been really sappy and very like, all right, mm. I roll. Yeah. Like, so I, and uh, but I think the film's so like one thing I realized when watching it recently, the performances are so understated. Tim Robbins, especially. There's no big actor nah. in this. You know what I mean? There's no one like. There's no. There's no scene chewer. Yeah. Even even Clancy Brown, who could have very well, he could, oh. have, he could have been so close to being like, "Well, I'm the evil god, and I'm yeah. gonna beat the shit out of you." He's just Clancy Brown, who's really angry. I forgot Mr. Krabs was in this, and same, same. And I, I every time he starts shouting. It's like, you goddamn make it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I'm> just, <laughs> it's, it's so like, money, 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 money. <laughs> I, just can't, I can't unhear it every time he speaks. It's brilliant. It's, I, I realized so it when I realized it when I first played Detroit Become Human. I realized who yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah. And it, But it's like, that's when you realize, oh, the, the Mr. Krabs voice isn't a put on voice. No, it's just, it's how he just Clancy Brown's voice, yeah. which makes things even more fucked. <laughs> yeah. It's really Is weird. It? When, he's, call- when think- he's calling someone a fuck. And if I close yeah. my eyes, I can imagine, <laughs> I can imagine Mr. Krabs. There's surely an edit where someone's taken. Oh, there must stuff, be. Of him like shouting a from Shawshank. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be so good. Him if not, if Sponge- not, I'll make him, it. Him holding SpongeBob over a roof. Over yeah. the, over the, <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you trust your wife, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> that's, that'd be great. But I think that's what like this film nails. Like it's a drama that's really heartwarming. Mm. But there's nothing sickly about it. There's nothing like all right. Like I, I will admit, I need to rewatch Forrest Gump. But from my memory, Forrest mm. Gump is that like all right, mate. Okay. Hey, you know, I'll have no Forrest Gump slander on this. I'm not saying I, hey, I'm not. I, Thank I, you I am, very much. The, I've only seen it once, and it, it was around. It was around about the time when I first watched Shawshank Redemption as oh, well. Okay. So I need to rewatch it, but from but I'm not sure. But do you know what I mean? Like yeah, or yeah. like dra- those dramas of certain dramas of those era that were they were just trying to get the Oscar. Just they just really yeah. wanted the Oscar. Yeah, no, and I, mean. I feel like there's there's almost a slight bit of DNA. Of there's a slight bit of that in Shawshank's DNA, but it never like goes to a point where it's like that's a bit much that like. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like the story beats are so, like, um, so well done in the sense of like, all right, you you made me give a shit about that character enough, and you're yeah. making and you're showing me that character enough to where I'm not getting sick of this fuck. That yeah. like like oh what's his name Haywood, fucking love that yes. guy. Like, yeah, but, he's great. But he's he's used sparingly, and like I yeah. think like and I think even like Morgan Freeman is used sparingly. Even his narration, which could have very well if if I could see another alternative universe that I would have got sick of him. Yes, hundred percent. Say all right, Red. I say all right, Red. I get you. You're the you're the you're the wise guy who knows everything about the prison, and you yeah, can yeah. get anything. Like you could he could have very well have just been like Mister Hot Shot, Hot Shit. Yeah, like I know everything, and then I would have gone fuck off you. you yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I even think even Andy Dufresne, there's like something about him that like could have been like, if taken another direction, he could have been, oh, the whimsical prisoner who came in and improved everyone's life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, like I can see it again. I can almost see it on term universe. We're like, and that's when we found out Andy Dufresne was our guardian angel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that isn't the case. No. And for me, it's like, what, what the, what works the best for this movie for me? Well, for me generally in films, it always comes down to the script. And I think the script for this is so fucking good. No, I agree. It's so yeah. good. The character writing is so good. And I know that everybody think when you think of Shawshank, you, you think, Oh yeah, Tim Robbins, that's the main character, but he's not really. So to me, I would say red's the main character. It, it would be, a, do you know what it is? I think the reason why we all connect Andy Dufresne as the main character as opposed mm. to Red is because the film is because we start seeing Andy yeah. and we start seeing him in court. If yes. the film, if the film opened with Red going in to try to get parole, then yeah. Red's our main character. Yeah. And then I, it's like when Andy Dufresne came in short, then Andy Dufresne's just this yes, new entity. This but, external thing. Yeah. But I think it's because we are immediately introduced. The first person we're introduced to is 
Andy Dufresne. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a joint lead film, yeah, I guess. Yeah, really, say. yeah. And I think, like, everything builds so nicely. Because at first, obviously, he's in a, we care because he's in a shit situation because he's in prison and he shouldn't be in prison. I, I know that you don't really know whether he is innocent or not. I always but, come across. I've always come away with the thought, like, well, he is. Like, that's yeah, yeah, he the, he obviously is. To, in my head, it's like, yeah, he is. Um, even from the beginning, um, it always felt like he was. And then, you know, oh god, I forgot what my point was now. Uh, Red being the main character. Yes. Brighton. Yes. I, I've, I'm still lost. I, I was talking about the script. Oh yeah. So he comes into this shitty situation. And we know he's not supposed to be there because he just seems different. Like, he doesn't seem like he's he's a bad dude. Yeah. And that's why you care about him at first. But then it's like little things. And then you don't even notice it happening. There was a thing um, this weekend, me and Julia watched The Eyes of Tammy Faye, which I really enjoyed. Um, oh, okay. But like her, throughout that film, Julia pointed out to me, we went, she went because she'd seen it before and she wanted me to watch it. She went back to the first scene and showed me that character in the first scene and then showed me her in the last scene and was like, did you notice the makeup getting fucking mental as it it went along? And I was like, no, because you don't, it's so like, you know, you're so in it that you don't even notice. And then Shawshank does the same sort of thing with how horrible the prison is. You don't, Mm. you don't realize how bad it is as it's going along. And then, you know, and then someone gets murdered. And then the whole stuff with Brooks happens and then it keeps on going and the, and the corruption's awful and awful and awful. And then that kid is shot and it's like, Oh my God, this is the worst thing in the world. What the fuck, yeah. what the fuck is this? And then he's, you know, he's spending a month in a room with no lights and, and it's like, when did this happen? Give him, an, give him another month to think it through. Oh, oh my God. It's, it's awful. <laughs> the guy fucking sucks. But like, but you it's know, like, it's, but it's interesting because the film doesn't, Take long to be like to go rough and grim. Like, yeah. like we're in prison, and we kind of see the camaraderie between Red and everyone. But then it's like, but then we're me like right. Andy, your friends get fucking hosed down. There's yeah. talc thrown on him. Yeah, yeah. And then we cut to night. Fat guy, that guy dies. Sh- <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> yeah. guy gets beat. Yeah. The shit. <laughs> so he like, dies in the first night. So it's like, God, yeah. Jesus, that's like you know, it's not like. Yeah. It's you're, you're immediately not. In a happy space. No, exactly. So, and then the the, the 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 things with those guys that keep following him around. The sisters. Yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's great. Uh, yeah. The, the actor's fantastic. But uh, yeah, that situation's awful. I always find it cool. I always find it interesting, like actors who play like awful people in films or TV shows. Mm. And I'm like... These must be great actors, because surely, like, no one... Like, like, obviously, you get, like, despicable people, but, like, you know when you get, like, people like a Bryce or a Monty in 13 Reasons Why? And I only know that because yeah. they're pretty much at commentaries, but it's, like, these awful, like, abusive rapists. And yes. it's like, well, the actors surely aren't those types of people, so yeah. these are great actors, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, like, to make be. me, like, to make me see someone's face and go, ugh. Yeah, oh, because of the because of the role that they play, it's the same thing with the sisters. I see that guy walk up to Andy in the showers. I'm like, I ah, can you leave? Yeah, you like, get the fuck out. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I and I like the thing as well. Like they like the film. This is what I mean. It's interesting thing. I think this film ages beautifully. Yes, for ma- for many different reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think for this in a particular, because I feel like um, I think. I and someone else covers it a lot better than I will do it on YouTube. A guy called Pop Culture Detective. He covers a lot of these types of topics yeah. uh, really well. Like he covers uh, masculinity in okay. media uh, yeah. a lot, uh, quite well. He has a good, he has a good series of videos about uh, uh, depictions of sexual assault to males in media. So give mm. that a go. But when he he did a video on Shawshank Redemption on the humanization of prisoners, okay. and and he said about like there's a point in this film that like that reason does a good job in terms of like not because how some media uses homosexuality to, um, to, uh, and how to use as a tool for male sexual assault as Mm. if like, well, this is happening because of homosexuality. Whereas like this film could have just kept like that. Like could have not said anything, but they have the bit of where like, he says that in the yard and then like Andy do. And then Andy goes like, 
sure, would, would it help if I tell him I'm not a homosexual? And he goes like, you have to be human for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. no, he goes like, he goes, um, neither are they. You have to be human first. Yeah. And he goes, okay, you've immediately like established the fact it's not a, it's not a sexuality thing. It's mm. not a thing that he fancies Andy Dufresne. It's a, it's a power play. Yeah. Is is what it is, which is what, you know, uh, which I, you know, I, and I, and again, I think this film is as brutal as it is. I'm glad we didn't see anything. Yes. It yeah, is yeah. well. Like we have things like we just pull out and we have Red's narration. Like sometimes he fought them off. Sometimes he didn't. That's just yeah. how it goes. I like, okay. That's all I needed. I didn't yeah. need to see, I didn't need to see Andy Dufresne's trousers get pulled down and then a whole scene happen. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's tasteful. Be, yeah. It's and tastefully a, directed. I already, I already, I already saw like a guy get the shit kicked out of him and die. Right, on exactly. The, so yeah. it's like, you know, I, you, we, we get it. You know, I'll, I'll take, I'll take pieces. You know, I'm, Give yeah. me brutality in pieces. I don't need like Yeah. But like it's even the insinuation anyway of like just when like the sisters like hold him like with the knife and stuff and like in the in the projector room or whatever. Mm. It's like, well, I know, you know, I that, that's already uncomfortable to me anyway. I don't need yeah, anymore. Yeah. Like I could tell what is happening and when he's describing what he wants to do to Andy, it's like, oh, that's unnerving. Yeah, that's, that's like, you know. You, you, you're getting it across within that way. I think it, I think it works wonderfully in that sense. I've got um, the right. I, I must say, I've seen this film in a in a different light uh, this time around. Post uh, <coughs> watching this film post lockdown mm, interesting. is interesting. I think. Um, hey, any second your film students listen, uh, what what am I going to write my dissertation about? I've got you. There's a, I think there's an interesting um, point to be made about about viewing this post lockdown, especially with the stuff, um, the the idea of the institutionalized bit of like, <sighs> which uh, I'm not gonna go too far into because uh, I did have to skip it because it made me real sad. So, oh, did, so did you did you skip the Brooks I, I, bit? Yeah, I skipped it. So, uh... Sorry, everybody. I watched it as long as I could. And then it got it got to the bit when he was going to do the thing, and I was like, "Nah, not going to watch that." Fair, fair. fair <laughs> I'm not going right. to watch that. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, but so I think it's interesting um, as a parallel between like these guys that they've been, you know, they've been in that place for so long that then they go out and they're like, "I don't fucking know what to do." <laughs> Because I don't yeah. know, I don't know what living a life is anymore. You know, think, uh, we you, we are about that great writing that Frank Darabont did in the screenplay. Yes, and, yeah, we, yeah. and we talk we talk about the one not only from a story perspective, but also from a dialogue perspective. Mm. Um, with like you know, Red going like, "Send you here for life," and that's exactly what they take. Ah, yeah, awful. Ah. And like the ah. the stuff with Brooks, where he's like, you know. I saw a car once when I was like a when kid. I was a kid, I, there was a car once, and now they're yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and now they're just everywhere, and it's like, oh Jesus, yeah, because like you know, the, the got, world just got, moves on. He got locked. He said, um, "Nine oh five, I think." Yeah, is when he and then and then he was made librarian in nineteen twelve. Yeah. Oh my and, god. And he got let out in fifties. Yeah. In in that in the so he was in there for like. Half a decade. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, not half a decade, half a century. Yeah. But it's like, you know... Century? I think there's something to be said about the the positivity of the really hopeful message the film puts out by the end. It, it, it gets there. It's quite no, sad, no, it does, it's quite it sad for a bit, but it gets there. Uh, it does this yeah. really hopeful message about, you know, that all this horrible stuff happened to you and then carrying on afterwards, which mm-hmm. I think is, uh, especially now actually resonates a lot better, especially for, like, for me, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, you know, that kind of lockdown and then coming back into normal life and trying to talk to people again and and all that kind of stuff, it, it made it a bit more, made it a bit more tangible for me, weirdly. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I think, like, this, like that, if you're on about that Brook, uh, if we're talking about that Brook scene, yeah, independently, again, another great example of just, establishing a really fucking good character yeah like again love brooks but yeah. like but again didn't need a try that's what i mean uh, i don't know what the fuck frank darabont did but he did a beautiful job like no one 
he just got these actors. Again, I don't know who the casting director for this as well, mm. but he got these actors to read this bang up script, these great actors to read this bang up script. And then I just, like, I didn't need Haywood to do a thing to make me like him. Yeah, I just, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't need Brooks to do a thing. I didn't need yeah. Red to do it. I didn't need anyone to, to like, there was no arsehole and then they need to redeem themselves. It was just, yeah. All right. You're, you're, you know, you, you know, like how in real life where you get a vibe with someone and you go, all right. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And then you get to know them a bit and then you go, you're sound as fuck. I, yeah. that, that's kind of like the vibe with this film where it's like, you know, when we get introduced to Brooks being like, when Andy Dufresne pricks a maggot out, he goes, you're going to eat that. Yeah. <laughs> And then you think, like, who the fuck's this weird old man? And then yeah, it's but like, he's, he's feeding he, a little bird. And then he goes, like, oh, looks really ripe. And you go, is he gonna? And then he gives it, like, yeah. Like, oh, Jake says thank you. He goes, oh. Oh, what a, what a fucking sweetheart. And then, like, and, then we, and then we see big boy Jake later in the film. Oh, my God. See, that's, that's the thing. I'll get onto it in a second because there's, there's another point I want to make on this before I forget. Um, what I, one thing that I do love about this film is that. It go it constantly goes the extra mile, right? And I think it's a thing that's very that's missing in movies now. Um, where if somebody wants someone to have an arc, right, they'll put a scene in where they have a little sad talk about their feelings, and then at the end we'll pay it off with one other scene. And then it's like, yeah, we've got an arc over the whole thing. Cause do you remember those two scenes? It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I re- yeah, I remember. Whereas this, it's like, you know. When Brooks goes out, there's the voiceover and they read in the letter and the scene could have been that. But instead, the director decides, you know what? I'll just put a fucking mint short film in the, in the middle of this No, movie. it is. It really is. Like, this incredible like, like you, short film. You, you could have taken that out and just shown an old man leaving prison and that's the short film. And that's yeah. a narrative right there and there. Yeah. And then it's like, right, how do we show that Red is struggling after leaving prison at the end. I'll tell you what we could do. We could have a scene where he's sat in a bar having a beer and he just tells someone that he's sad. Mm. I'll tell you what else we could do, though. We could instead bring back the we stuff could... from the Brooks scene, mirror it, yeah. give him the same job. Oh, because he's in the same prison system, he's in the same apartment with the callback of the reason that Brooks will have written the thing. Obviously, it's a sad thing for him to write anyway. But it's also then used later on as a callback to say they are in the same apartment. And it's like, it's, you don't have to do that. I, I want to talk about, is that going to be a cinematography? No. Um, Cause I do want to talk about the cinematography independently uh-huh. as well. Uh, I'll mention it now and we can, cause then I could break down the cinematography itself. Cause we're talking about like, I feel like that mirrors like the mirror of Brooks and red in mm. their own thing and that's another thing I love that this film could make me remember the characters and I'm not saying James Whitmore and Morgan Freeman you know what I mean like, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, little yeah. thing for me it's a little thing for me but I always love it when a film that's when I know I really like the film or when the film's really like got like mm. in my head is when I'm not saying when Morgan Freeman left yeah I mean and I mean to be uh, example how you know Yes, uh, it, it's a wonderful life. We said George Bailey. We didn't say Jimmy Shu. We said George Bailey. But like, mm-hmm. as much as I enjoy the Philadelphia story, how much, how many times were we saying the character's name? We didn't. We were like Cary Grant, and Jimmy Stewart. We, you know what yeah. I mean? Whereas like, whereas like with this, I'm like, I'm saying like Morgan, like Red, Red, yeah. not Morgan, Red. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I feel like the Brook scene is always is always there's no hope in that nah. scene. Like, and and where is the Red? scene it's got its ups and downs and sadness but i think the overall it's a lot more of an optimistic feeling mm. of like he's like he's out and yeah. he's gonna and i think it's a simple thing i'm not sure if you excuse me caught on to it but i only caught on to it watching it this time mm. um, um for the third time like yesterday when i um when brooks leaves the prison the shots front on face and brooks and behind yeah. him's the prison and he leaves. Yes. When Red when Red leaves Shawshank, we're behind him and we're seeing the the other work. So yeah. so I don't know if I mean this feels like Roger Deakins definitely would have thought this. I don't yeah. it doesn't seem like an accident. Like as if like as if Brooks's mind is still in the prison, but Red's is looking outwards to the Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Good for so you, Mr. Mr. Film Studies. 
Go so, on. It's a, good on so you. So to me, like, because I always, because to me, I'm always like, and this is this is this is what helped me get a very good grade in a lot of my research because I watch films and I go, that made me feel that way. How did that make make me feel yeah. that way? And I always knew, like, watching the Brooks scene, him walking out, I always did feel this like, oh, man, this is a bit like. Sad. Yeah, and we're getting the exact same scene with Red, but I'm like, but why aren't I feeling the? Because uh, I'm not seeing Shawshank behind him. I'm seeing mm. like the, the sun, the world. I'm seeing the, the world and, and the, stuff. Yeah, there, there's, yeah. So it's clever, it's clever shit like that. Like why this film, mm. I think, like from a filmmaker point of view, is really good. Yeah. Um, wind it back to narrative. Yes. And stuff. Um. um because one, th- I, I'll I'll make a general point of what I've realised mm. watching this film. Why I think this, why I think this film, what makes this film a really good watch, mm-hmm. is there's no one story. This film yeah. is made up almost episodically, yeah, of just loads of different things. We got the little the little library episode. We got yeah. the Brooks episode. We got the Tommy episode. We got yeah. like. We got the sisters episode. We got, you know, we got all these different points that I think it almost like it's a, it's weird. It's almost I don't know if it would qualify this, but it's almost slice of life but prison. Like mm. it's not like yeah. it's. I mean, obviously there's there's a big there's a big arc. There's obviously a there's an arc going through the whole thing. But I think what mm. makes this film a bit more of a nicer watch. Uh, which is one thing I've discovered. What I like about films is if, like, if they almost treat themselves not just as one big, like, we need to get through this one narrative clean. It's like yeah. I almost need little sub stories in the films. Yes. It's one thing I've discovered of what I think makes a really great film is these little, even if it's one main point, for example, 12 Angry Men, um, which I. It, that you've got you you got many even though the the whole point of that film is like it's a jury it's a jury room to try and decide if if this kid's guilty or not it's like well we got like each little section because we got like the old man his little thing we've got the guy with the glasses we got all these characters with their bits mm-hmm. same thing with this I think as well yeah there, there's lots of just segments which what it's like it goes oh this is the bit where he plays the record. Oh, this is the bit where this happens. This is the bit where Rita Hayworth does that shit with her hair and all that stuff. Yeah. I think that's what makes the script and the pacing just go like that. Because oh, yeah. each time, each time, like the last two times I watched this film, it gets towards him throwing the rocket at uh, Raquel Welch. And then mm. I'm like, fuck, we're already here. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- this was the thing with me this time was that, um, so, you know, for those who don't know, when I watch these films, I'm going to be, I'm going to sound like a bad guy that talks about films on the internet. Uh, I, do, I don't usually watch them in one sitting. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I've got, a, I've got things I've got to do in my time. I've only got a certain amount of time I could put aside to watch a movie. I want to do some writing. I, I go at work every day. You know, I, I've got things to do, right? Um, and this, I got, I watched the first, I said... I'll watch the first hour tonight and then I'll finish the second hour in the morning before I go to work. I'll get up early and I'll do that. Um, and I just kept watching it. Yeah. And then I, I paused it and was like, right, I do need, I actually need to go to bed now because I was on the early shift, went to sleep, woke up, been to work. And I was like, right, I'll pick it up where I left off. Right. Okay. Turn on the telly. Uh, there it is. Press play. Look to the time thing. I've only got 20 minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, fuck. How much how did I not realise like how much I'd watched last night? But it's because it's so well paced. And I think I think of one one thing that it does really well in that respect in the in uh pacing wise, passage of time is yeah. done is done really cleverly. Um like what we were saying earlier, Jake the Bird. Little 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 uh fucking what you call, what's a baby bird called? Oh, I don't know. Oh Jesus. Little baby bird, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a, in a, in, a, in an old man's pocket when we first meet him, you know, maybe forty minutes later in the movie when Andy walks in the, into the library to work in the library, big fucking crow, yeah, you know, the little baby bird didn't look like a crow by the way, but that's fine. Why yeah, but, but you know, but you know, it is what it is. Um, that's things another like that. point I want. To, that's another point I want to get to a bit later on. But yeah, go on about shit like that. Yeah. Well, it's like little things like that, and like. Uh, Andy 
moves differently. And you don't you see you that you see you see slightly grays at his side. He's yeah. great a bit more. Yeah, and he and he moves slower and and there's bits like later on where you think like all of a sudden I was like fuck he looks a bit older you know and it's like when he's sat in a big fucking cardigan with his glasses on being like do your times tables to the yeah, yeah. <laughs> to fucking Tommy or whatever and I'm like oh shit this is an old, this is an old guy he's not that old he's like you know fucking sixty or whatever but he's, he's twenty years old I I, I think yeah, he's twenty I don't years know older I, th- I think I think he's in his twenties when he gets sentenced to prison I would yeah. assume I would think late twenties. Yeah. And so by the time he escapes, he's like late forties, probably. That yeah. feels that, that that feels, that about, feels right. about right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just really, really well done. It doesn't make you think about I think that ep- like you were saying, that episodic feeling makes it easily digestible. Because mm. you know it's this bit, and you kind of know that, like, you know, I know that when he puts the record on, he then ends up in solitary. I know that. And that kind of is like a chapter. Where yeah. it goes like, right, okay, I know that starts there and ends there. What's the next one? Oh, I love this bit as well. Yeah. And you know and you know how that ends, and by the time that ends, you're like, oh shit, it's been another twenty minutes and it, That's what I mean, yeah. It's, it, like, it's really, really easy to watch. I, I, I kept holding off going for a piss yesterday. Because I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I'll watch this bit, it's fine. And then that yeah. when that bit ends, I'll I'll go for a piss. And then like it was like I actually like this bit, so I'll watch this. And then yeah. <laughs> I'm like and then it got to one point, it got like right before like the guy went to Tommy. It's like, Warden wants to see you. I had like pause it like right before the officer got oh, to him. And I was gotcha. like, right, I'm going to have to pause this. Before I need a piss yeah. right now. Because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to watch the whole thing of him getting gunned down and shit. Yeah. And I'm going to be shit. streaming out of here and here <laughs> and down here, down the middle, right <laughs> down my leg. I'm going to piss. I'm like just wet I'm going to like, piss and cry all at the same time. <laughs> I think oh, um, we'll talk about the cinematography. Side yeah, things, go, so oh te- yeah, go on then if you want. Technical side of things. I didn't realize how many shots I remembered until no. I watched it again. I'm like, fuck yeah, that's like of, we all know the rain coming. We all know that shot. Yeah, we know that one. But then there's little other things where it's like, oh yeah, there's the the other. There's also the shot when he rips the poster off and the wall. Yeah, like, oh, incredible bruh. shot. Um, there's love it. There's the shot of Andy when he's getting sentenced. Two, yeah. two prison that like slow like dolly in yeah. on him. It's like that's a good ass shot. There's the get busy living, get busy dying mm-hmm. shot. There's yeah. pick which shot from the Brook scene. Yeah, <laughs> pick whichever shot. Yeah, Wh- any of he's them. On, where, where he's on the bus or what he's when when, when what when groceries. What hap- yeah, when what happens to him happens yeah. to him. Like, there's so many shots that happen in this film. Like God, yeah. I, again, I don't know why I'm surprised that Roger Deakins made a film where I'm like, oh, God, yeah, there's so many shots that are great in this. But for some reason, you know, like there's some Roger Deakins films or well, there's just some films generally where you go, oh mm. yeah, the shots, the cinematography. Yeah. Like, as, again, Blade Runner 2049 is a good film, but that film's identity is the cinematography. Yes. You, yeah, you, yeah. Or, or like um, Birdman, great film. People yeah. think, oh, the, the cinematography in that. Yeah. Shawshank Redemption isn't a cinematography film. But it looks so good. <laughs> but there's so many shots where you go, it, yeah, that shot. Yeah. I, I remember that shot. I go, oh, well, Tommy getting gunned down. I, re- I remember so, the frame. And I'm like, <laughs> one that really jumps out to me is, um, I was genuinely like racking my brain being like, how did he do that? Because it's when uh, Red is going to the oak tree near, right at the end. Yes. And there's a shot from the back of him uh, moving out into the into the horizon uh, towards the tree, moving away from the camera. And I don't know how he did it, but the looks to like there's no depth. It's like oh, right. the background and the foreground are like just one solid image and it looks like a fucking oil painting. It's, it's beautiful and I have probably, no idea. It feels like a weird focal length. I was going to say, it, it probably would just be a really tight lens. Yeah. It would just be like an unbelievably like tight lens, yeah. Really, really tight lens with camera really far back, probably. Mm. But it it looks so good. It looks so nice. Yeah, again, I don't know. Again, I don't know what it is about it. It's a certain like, it's it's just a certain vibe of it. It's a really it's you know it's just a really beautifully shot '90s drama. Yeah, is what it is. It's like I don't think there's any other decade that could have had this visual identity. 
Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think, I think, like, it's it's weird. I do think each every decade has their visual identity. Like yeah. every, you know, we all we're all gonna we all look at. You know, there's been times where we look at films from the fifties and we go, God, that looks great, but it could only look great because it's from the fifties. Or like, yeah, or like, or like when we've talked about seventies films, we go, how the fuck? But that's just how the seventies film looked. And it's yeah. the same thing with this, where it's like. It's just about the like nineties films that just have a look to them that has a bit of grit. I don't know what it is. Like the film, it doesn't look clean. But no. The, yeah. But but it's not it's not grind you know what I mean? It's not grindhousey or anything. Yeah. It's not like I'm not seeing film cracks or like specs no, no, everywhere. No. But there's a certain quality to it where it's like, well, I can see like again, the it's examples like this where I'm like, well, I can see what Tarantino and Nolan mean in terms of like you just can't capture film. Mm. Like, like there's some, there's sometimes film captures something that digital just can never can. Yeah. Again, as I said in previous episodes, there's pros and cons to both. I think I don't think yeah. there's like, I don't think one's right or wrong, but I do think some films benefit from the medium, and I do think, I mean, I do, I mean, there is probably a world where a digital at least shot Shawshank Redemption would also look beautiful. I'll, yeah, but but I, I I think the film lens, like the film medium lens to this film mm. um, in that, in this way. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you know I, what I mean. I agree. And, uh, and hey, guys, there's no need to be such a prick about it. <laughs> what about like... Film hey, hey, Tarantino. Film hey, no one. There's no need to be such a dick about it. Just chill out. Just chill the fuck out, all right? That's why I love Jesus. Finch. That's why I like Finch. Finch is like, digital's just easier. Yeah, exa- just yeah just, exa- exactly. Just, 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 just shoot on a DSLR. Calm down. <laughs> Social network was all shot on a Canon 750D. That wasn't that wasn't a DSLR, was it? it no, of course it wasn't. Imagine. I was going to say, that wasn't <laughs> imagine, a DSLR. Imagine he shot it all on his fucking Canon. Or his 5D. He, he, got, he, he shot it all on his Sony A7. <laughs> hey guys, I brought my Nick on for man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. But yeah, I, I don't yeah. think I got any more points about the film. It's good. <laughs> I got, I got a few more. I got yeah, a few go more. All right, to, go Because I think that um, uh, one thing that I um, when I first when I watched it last week, it was a film that in my head, it was like I gave, I gave like a four and a half, like yeah. uh, out of five, uh, and because in my head I'm like I went through the thing. Like, I mean, it's great, but there's some things I'm like, uh. Like not like mm. not necessarily, uh, but I'm like, all right, well, that doesn't like that feels a bit too convenient, in okay. a sense. Um, but uh, or like, and I also uh, maybe at points I found Andy Dufresne a bit too perfect of a character. You know what I mean? Mm. Like in the sense, like I did feel like, ah, oh, of course he cheered everyone up. Of course, this yeah. Happened. But on, upon watching it again, I realized that's a mindset that comes from a modern lens. Yes. And and I feel and it only occurred to me watching it another time, like this last time, I'm like, God yeah. This like this film, it's like it's just great. And you just don't need to an- ask the questions. Like the, the questions that you have just don't need the answers. Because it yeah. doesn't affect the fir- again, example, when you were like, not sure if that bird was a crow. Where, <laughs> but it's like, like who gives a shit? No one and you know what I mean. Whatever, no, it doesn't no matter. Cares. Or like, yeah. or like an example for me, it's like people might be like, well, so you telling me Andy Dufresne hammered through the wall and then just like waddled back, like he crawled in and out constantly to get, it's like, well, who cares? He, 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 yeah. he, he, dug a, he dug a hole. Who cares? Whatever. You Doesn't telling matter. me only, it only took him three goes hitting a rock on a pipe to burst. Like, yeah, who cares? Who cares? Yeah, who cares, man? Just chill out. It's, it's like, you know, like, there's elements like that throughout this film where I'm like, that was made. It's, it's like how does like wait? How does Red get the? Or how does Red sneak in all this stuff into the prison? It doesn't. Oh, matter. He just does. He's been there for decades. I don't, it doesn't matter. He's and got so a I, force or whatever. It, it, <laughs> Who cares? That's what I mean. It's like it's like wait. So wait. So the prisoners. So the prison guards don't examine it. It's like, oh, just don't worry about it. Yeah. Just don't. Just it. It just happens. Andy Dufresne got a got a um. What's it called? The hammer. Little, he got the his, hammer. His little pickaxe. Um, uh, Red sneaks. Yeah, Red sneaks in packs of cigarettes on the weekly. Yeah, currency. Tell you what, I do admire about this. Uh, it, Andy's Andy's plan generally is. 
I mean, good on him. Pretty good. Yeah. The, the fact that he's like, you know, I'd like I, it. I do, so, I do have a question. Sorry. I'll let you get back to your point in a second. Um, you know his little chisel thing that he got? Um, oh, wait, are you delayed? Oh, God. We're delaying a little bit. Hang on. You're, you're coming. Hang on. You should. Oh, I've got poor connection on Skype. Sorry, everyone. My oh, shit. What a God. Surprise. Not this guy. Uh, apologies for everyone. There might be a slight delay still on things. Hang on. Let me close my Facebook Messenger. We just had a whole scuffle. We had a whole oh, scuffle. Oh, my God, man. Fucking hell. And I'm not sure how. And I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get further on this because we're because Robbie's still freezing on my end as well. But we're gonna oh power god as best as we can. We're gonna oh, do don't it. say that, Robbie. What do you mean? Oh, I thought you were like, oh god, something's going. I thought you were. Uh, gonna, no. I thought you went, oh god, something's wrong. No, we're all good. All good over here. Me and um, whatever the two guys from Prison Break are called. We're all good over here. Oh, I never watched it. Oh. Um, but yeah, I can't, I can't remember what we were talking about, but I think to round off the thing, I'll, what I'll say is this, um, mm. as I said, there's a lot that goes on in Shawshank Redemption. That's quite, um, if you nitpick it too much, I think you could unravel stuff. But I think what this film is a pure example of is that like, there's a lot of stuff where it's like, yes, there's good examples of trying to find plot holes and be like, this story doesn't make sense. Why did no one think of this? But I think this film's a, the best example almost. There's a lot of things you could nitpick and be like, well, that doesn't make sense. Say, but that's not important for the enjoyment of the film. Yeah. Um, and I think, if anything, anyone, I think anyone could watch Short Sharon Redemption and be like, that was fucking neat, man. Um, and a round off, uh, uh, to round off the conversation on the film, itself which i think we're both in agreement that we but it's a fucking it's again it's good there's no news flash here it's a brilliant film yeah this is it's yeah. a brilliant film we're not we're not saying anything um, original but here. one thing i but to round off uh but around off do you, what, what's your favorite what's your personal favorite like moment or scene in the film i really like the bit on oh fuck. i like the bit when everything comes together at the end when he's escaped, that's pretty good. Um, and, you know, you find out that he's been choosing the way of the ball and the fucking the whole uh, laundering the money. He's been laundering oh, yeah. to a fake person that he then becomes and take, steals all the money for the thing. And then the warden goes to jail. It's just really satisfying. Um, I also like the bit where he gets everyone's uh, yeah. everyone beers on the roof. Great. Great little scene. That's my uh, favorite bit. Yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, but I mean, all of it's good. It's hard. It's like pick a favorite child, and I'll be like, mm, "Yeah, no." Nah. Uh, <laughs> I bet I'll be able to. I bet when it comes down to it, and I have multiple children, I'm like, "Who's your favorite?" I'll, I'll sit. I'll obviously say, "I love you all equally," but I'll, I'll, I'll like one of them more. I can tell you that for now. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think what I like about if you're on about the beer point it's like it almost just feels feels warm it just feels yeah. like summer i don't know what yeah. it is about it it's just like it's like i could, I could almost like feel the heat and i could almost taste the yeah. alcohol as well like, yeah and you can smell the tar that they're, it's they're, just something about the way that yeah you, you can smell the tar you can smell the sweat as well i can tell you that much yeah this fucking guy <laughs> gross me yeah. out the <laughs> we're, having a, we're on a lovely conversation about this movie you gotta fucking gross me out the end Oh, Jesus. Hey, well, you, you brought Tara into it. You brought uh, the Tara into it. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to try a brief thing oh, while yeah. we're coming to the close of talking about the film. I'm changing Wi-Fi. Hang on. You risky bastard. I, I, I changed Wi-Fi, then I went back because the Wi-Fi that I did change to was just worse. It was, it was. Oh, uh, okay. It was horrific. It was, it was just much um, worse. I couldn't hear you at all. Oh, well, um, that's, yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not moving on my screen currently. 
but at least there's we're having some sort of a conversation. Yeah, it's a, yeah. um and and to move into the intermission section, Robbie. Oh yeah. <clears throat> again, rounding again, rounding up Short Short Redemption, banging film. If you haven't seen it, what? But also yeah. go and watch it. It's great. Yeah. It's good. Just watch it. What do you want from um, us? Heart, heartwarming, heartwarming. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and on that, uh, we'll we should we should let's re- let's um, see where we're at with the teams. Oh <laughs> yeah, because uh, to kick because to kick things off, Robbie, oh, I God. just saw that Reese Bruce wants to send the intermission podcast a message. So what oh, does he have to let, say for himself? So totally. Oh my god. Um well I can read the message without giving him access to keep messaging us. Um Yeah, yeah, do that. That's good. Um Well he put only Team Lewis so I can shoot him in the back. I don't know what's he what does he want, this man man. That's actually really fair um, with um with a little tale I've got for today. But we'll get to that. Uh, Tyler apparently replied to the story. Tyler replied to the story saying, Team Robbie all the way. Yeah, he would. Right, let's look at the poll here. Right, Robbie. Yes. Okay, th- okay this is bollocks, first of all. When I'm looking at the <laughs> results so far, again, we, re- we will revisit the poll. We'll, <laughs> we'll revisit the poll at the, uh, the end of the episode. But here's... But but I'll I'll read to you, Robbie, the percentages. Oh god! Right? Yeah. In twenty percent, currently right now, is Team Oscar. That's a shame. Yeah. That's uh, a shame. In a split forty, a split forty is Robbie and is Team Robbie and Team Lewis. So let's oh see god. who's on what team, shall we? Yeah, maybe. So, can I, uh, hang on, is there a way of like, specifically highlighting, they've changed it, they've changed the thingy since, hang on, oh, it doesn't matter, right, here's, here's the case, here's what yeah. we've got, Robbie, yeah, are, go you, are, you, are, you, are you listening, are you ready? I'm so, I'm, I'm so ready, um, come on. Right, so me and you obviously voted for each other's team, um, our respective teams. Yeah. Um, we've got right. This is uh, we've we've we, we've got a narrative for this season already, and I'll oh, tell you, and you, we'll find out what it is. They haven't split it into anyway. Okay, right. So I'll read the names, and then you'll try get, and I want you to guess, Robbie, which person picked which team. You ready? Okay. Yeah. So, Joseph Caslin, what team is he? He's Team Lewis, I would imagine. He is Team Lewis. Yeah. 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 Fucking creep. He's still Team Lewis. Uh, Maisie Rooney, what team is she? She's Team Oscar. She is still Team Oscar, yes. Oh, fucking scum. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Ellie... Ellie Cutmore, what team is she? I hope she's still Team Robbie. She's Team Lewis. <laughs> oh, Ellie. God, that's infuriating. Got our first de facto. Oh, my God. <laughs> she gets a line in this episode as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it either way. Um, oh Maddie Tweeter, what team is she? She's not going to be mine, is she? She'll be Team Lewis. Is Maddie Tweeter is Team Lewis. What a fucking bitch. Yes. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be ringing her tomorrow night. <laughs> no, bad. Bouncing through all the teams is all I'm saying. Oh, is what my she's God. Doing. Um, Classic. Classic. Got... Um, Joe Lamb. Oh, that's Maddie's boyfriend. Oh, right, okay. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, 
if he wants to be accepted into the family in any way, he'll be Team Robbie. <laughs> He's Team Robbie. Come on! <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, he's a good lad. I always liked him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um we got a uh, Connor Dorian. I really, I really want him to be on my team. He's jumped from Team Lewis to Team Robbie. Good on, fucking get in. That's my fucking boy right there. He's mine. <laughs> You bitch. <laughs> Tyler McCulloch. But he's me, and he. He's, he's Team Robbie. He, yeah. is, he is, in fact, uh, Team Robbie for life. Yeah. Team Captain, of course he is. Um, and Reese Bruce. Oh, he's a fucking rogue agent, that kid. He was made up a fourth option. <laughs> this is. Uh, this is. This, this, <laughs> I was. This is Reese Bruce private account. I want to state that. Oh, I want okay. to state that. Um, <laughs> um, he is Team Lewis. So <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Who is this so, man? He hasn't. He hasn't done anything with his, with his film account. So I think by that. Yeah. By that regard, I still got film Reese Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Technically. Yeah. But again, again, it fits with the narrative. But we're going to revisit. But we're going to um, revisit. We'll revisit um, the teams yeah. um, at the end of the episode, just to fully clarify. Um, with the state of the internet currently, Robbie. Yeah. I don't want. I don't, I don't think there's loads. That there's there's. We, we'll get through. We, I tell you what. For this episode, mm. we'll get to the story. Yeah, the Tyler Tail. Yeah, and we can move on to the negative letterbox reviews to save any other. Yeah, that's shit. fair. That's fair. So, fair, and then, and then we'll have a proper catch up on what's going so on. So, Robbie, do, yeah. So, Rob, we'll do yeah. all that next. So, Robbie, week. do you want to take it over? Do you want to take it over for the the Tyler Tail? Yeah, and if Lewis, I'm if you fascinated, could... and I'm and I'm chomp and I'm chomping at the bit, <laughs> um. Lewis, if you could write like a like a bedtime story, you know, mystical fantasy theme tune for this, because it will be a recurring segment now that we can put at the beginning of every se- time that it goes out. That'd be fucking mint. Cheers, mate. Uh, you know, because you've got now else on. So, um, interior, <laughs> <laughs> interior. Tyler's mum somewhere else. Um. The team is in disarray without their fearsome leader. Uh, Ryan Tomlinson is just sat in a corner, untagging himself from Instagram posts one by one. He's been at it since 2010, and he'll he'll never fucking stop because I'll never stop tagging him. Um, Ellie's sat just licking a shoe, or you know whatever it is people do that when they're from their neck of the woods. Um, and Leo is balancing. Uh, the last of a set of baby birds that Tyler was calling his t- pet project on Sam, who's passed out drunk. Uh, <laughs> so, as you can tell, they're in a bit of a state. Uh, Leo, you know, it's not too bad here without Tyler. It's actually quite peaceful. Uh, Ellie, no, uh, sorry, <clears throat> like, no. I miss him very much, and I think we all do. Chorus. We all miss Tyler very much. Everyone says it together. Tyler's mum's walked in at this point. She started um, she started clearing pots away for everyone. You know, everyone goes, we all miss Tyler very much. Tyler's mum. I couldn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, suddenly the doors are kicked in it's Reese Bruce I'm on your side lady and honestly we have to worry about it we don't have to worry about it much longer what do you mean by that like says Ellie 
Show them, boys. Suddenly, the windows are shattered, revealing Gary and Angus in big Bugsy Malone style boxy Jesus. suits for Tommy it. guns. <laughs> Gary goes, all right. And then they open fire. It's a Valentine's Day massacre. Jesus. Uh, right. <laughs> Ryan Tomlinson, Sam Clark, and Ethan Strachan, who has yet to be mentioned in this series, but don't even worry about it because he's now canonically dead, are all riddled with bullets <laughs> in, an on- in an onslaught. <laughs> Angus. Like, where'd you want the bodies, boss? <laughs> Reese. I he- oh, he's going to hate that. <laughs> Sorry, Angus. Reese, bring him outside. I want to send Tyler a WhatsApp message. <laughs> Smash cut two. Uh, Tyler brooding and still wandering the streets. A nomad. <laughs> he gets a ping on his phone. It's from Reese. It says, Suck it, biatch. Three kisses. Makes messages from Reese Bruce there. Uh, Tyler takes his phone and just hardens his grip so much that he just fucking crushes it with one hand. (laughs) I don't know if I'm ready, Lake. I must seek forgiveness for what I nearly did. It's time to see the big boss, Lake. And that's it. That's our our rollicking, roaring, thrilling season opener of the Tyler Tales. What more do you want? Um, right, I have a few points <laughs> slash questions. Yes, yeah, yeah, to go make for, it. for that. Yeah, <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead. Right, first of all, um, I almost want someone to like do an anime style Same. animation over it. Same, hundred <laughs> percent. Second point I want to make is that <clears throat> why is L. Why is Ellie just Tyler in terms of your impression? Because <laughs> they're from the same place, aren't they? There are thereabouts. No, oh, no. It's, it's, it's all northeast, isn't it? Or Uganda, or whatever the fuck. Whatever Tyler's, accent I'm doing. Tyler, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler's from Redcar and Ellie's from like Chester Lee Street. Same thing, isn't it? I thought you were going to have more questions That's about brilliant. it. And I also... Oh, sorry, go on, yeah. You have another question. And I was going to say, and my other point, it's like, I like how you've given Angus... Like, your accent for Angus is spot on when Angus does an impression of, like, a Bugs and Malone gangster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it, That's how <laughs> he is now. He's, he's Reese Bruce's lackey. <laughs> hang on, hang on. There's a question I have then. Yeah, go on. Is Reese Bruce's lackey? Um. Well, you know, I, so, I think. So, but. There oh, you go. So, where am I in the canon? Or do or do I or do I fu- or does this get discovered later? We're we're getting we're gonna get round to that. Um. I, I basically what needs to happen is we need to solidify what Reese Bruce's role in this story is. Um, that should be the question running through the viewers' minds at the minute. Is he allied to one team or is he trying to make his own team and take the whole thing down? We'll, we'll see. And is he, you know, pulling allies from all over the place? Because it's a bit right. strange that uh, suddenly a team Lewis appears. You know, what? what's Lewis doing? We, we met Lewis and he was a bit, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't the smartest yeah, once once so, when well, yeah, once upon a time, once upon a time when Lewis wasn't a team leader himself and he was just another team yeah. Robbie member. It, it seems uh, all I'm going to say is I don't want to you know I'll, I'll do a little bit of foreshadowing here for the rest of the season. It just seems a bit unlikely that someone like that would have their own team. <laughs> Maybe it could be a front. Just saying. Uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? Because there's so many twists and turns that the story can take. And I, 
I also wanted to start the season off strong um, by showing that, you know, canonically people can die. <laughs> in in the canon of the Intermission podcast, people people can perish. And I was anyone... going to say, so remind me who's now killed off. Um, Ryan Tomlinson, uh, Sam Clark, and Ethan Strachan are now canonically dead in, in the podcast. <laughs> For no Ethan Strachan, who never got a character, but he <laughs> died. <laughs> never got mentioned. Never got a character. And now dead. He's really, he's really been uh, that guy in X Men First Class that said he could survive anything. He's, a, he's one of them. <laughs> I mean, at least that guy said something, you know. So yeah, that's the Tyler tale. Hey, I'm excited. I'm so much more to come, man. That was good shit. That was good. <laughs> I, I'm oh I'm on the edge of my seat, Robbie. Genuinely, oh, um, <clears throat> and now um, to move on. Go, oh God, I, I'm I'm slightly disappointed with how this podcast is, how this episode has turned out for the pure um, shit internet connection of it all. Um, yeah. but, but it is what it is, and we try to work through with whatever we do. Um, but with that, but with that. Lovely little Tyler Tower. We won't go too far in because you know what? It's you know what? Well, believe it or not, when when we're on a delay, our killer chemistry is heavily affected. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Big time. <laughs> uh, we're doing our best here, but what we'll move on to? We'll move on to the negative letterbox reviews segment of this film, um, and. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with this segment, this is where we go to the social media side letterbox. We go to the film that we had been talking about and we go to the negative reviews because that's always a funny time with it all. Uh, even though this... Um, even though this um, segment is always always finds itself on the chopping block, um, it always manages to pull out something. So, uh, we'll go through there and we'll see if there's any hall of famers right off the bat. And I'm making a new rule. I'm making a new rule as well. Um, if you're, if you've got a massive essay on your letterbox review, I'm not reading it. <laughs> Can't um, be we're, we're putting our goddamn foot down. Um, uh, for example, the first one is a half star review. And I'm looking at a dissertation. So oh. we're skipping through that. Yeah, none of that. <laughs> but the first one, Robbie, that we're going to review, kicking off season five, um, half a star. I hate Morgan Freeman and I hate his stupid hat. <laughs> what? Is stu- Does he wear a hat in this? Did you hear that, Robbie? I did hear that, but does he? Is there a is there a hat that he wears in this? Did you hear he that? Like, yeah. I, yeah, he, he wears not... like a flat cap. Oh, okay. See, I, I thought it might just be like he hates Morgan Freeman, the guy, and the stupid hat that he wears in real life. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's this hat that I've heard so much about? <laughs> That's bizarre. Yeah, I mean. I mean, what's wrong with a flat cap, realistically? I love a flat cap, <laughs> quite frankly. Hello? Love a good flat cap, like... Um, I was so oh, delayed. Th- this with the delay is so funny. <laughs> it's so good. So, sorry. Again, I want to repeat. Apologies to everyone sorry, for everybody. that. Uh, this is how this episode is going to end off. Um, but now we're not delayed. Do you know why? Because I'm on 4 I'm on 4G. 14. I'm on, I'm not on the Wi-Fi. Jesus. Stretch. You've lost out on the backgrounds, but you get a good sight of my new trim, which you didn't yeah. get to see properly. You get, a, so. you get a good sight of my dingy-ass flat. So that's good. I'm going to say... I'm going to turn my kitchen light on, so I've got a bit more of a... It's not made a, a difference. More, it's, a made, it's, it's made zilch of a difference. That's good. Right. 
And I'll continue reading the negative letterbox reviews, Robbie. Yeah, Are you ready to hear the rest of this? We got yeah. um, so so obviously we had half star. I hate Morgan Freeman and I hate his stupid hat. Yeah, um, don't understand it, but fair enough. Uh, we've got um, next one half a star. Cinema was a fucking lie. What does that mean? <laughs> As in, it was a lie in the cinema. There's a. There's a, there's one comment. Is someone like, what the fuck are you on about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my second favorite. Uh, it's not. It's someone arguing just generally. But cinema was a fucking lie. I like that as a sentence. You know what I mean? Just yes, <laughs> I like. I like that as a lie. I think um, Miles Scorsese probably said that if he went to see the Mario film. No, did you see? Did you see the Mario film? Yes, I've seen the Mario film. They they, they say cinema. They, they say. <laughs> That was cinema. Luigi pop- says, that was cinema. That popped me and Lewis so hard. I, <laughs> I was fucking creasing. <laughs> I was pissing myself. It was great. <laughs> good, deep, good film. You good know film. what? I enjoyed it. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, a very quick 90 minutes. I didn't yeah. need longer than that. Just yeah. give me that. I think critics uh, being like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen are morons. Are they <laughs> saying that? Are people yes. Saying- Everyone yeah. hates it. And I'm like, just chill out, man. It's fine. What do you want? Everyone, everyone that I'm, everyone that I watch and listen to are like, yeah, it's, yeah, no. yeah. Everyone's like, you know, everyone's like, ah, oh, but you know, there's no fucking story, and but it's like it's a Mario movie. What do you want? He it's like, yeah, because that's why I play the Mario games for as yeah. well. The st- he jumped the on some star. titles and he did a fucking flip or whatever. Good on him. Yeah, um, half a star. Not as good as Morbius. True. <laughs> Nothing will be or ever will be again. Morbin time, motherfucker. It, it, it's fucking uh, Morbin time. Okay. Uh, next one. Half yep. a star. Um, if the Shawshank Redemption is so good, then how come they never made a Shawshank Redemption 2? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. That makes me... That's, that's good shit. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's not a that, Hall of Famer, but I had yeah, a good that, time. That, like. that's, that's proper tickled me, that. That's great. Um, half a star. Um, <clears throat> um, hated this, and here's why. Right, he's got five points here. Um, point one. I waited two hours and 30 minutes for this movie to get to the interesting part, and it just never happened. The film's two hours and ten. Yeah, what are you talking about? What are you waiting to... To just start it again. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Um... Two takes place in, alter- in an alternate universe where women just do not exist in any significant. It's an all male prison, mate. It's a men, yeah, it's a men's prison. <laughs> what do you mean? You God fucking. Damn it. Oh. Um, three. Oh wait, I'm wrong. The most significant thing a woman does is die off screen. I um, yeah, but uh, I guess. But Rhea R- R- here with us about. Also. Yeah. Yeah, she you is. Know, you know, it's it, fuck. You're not helping the cause, are you? It's <laughs> it's set in like the 1920s when it starts. 50s, 40s, 40s, yeah. it's set in 40s. But yeah, you no. know, but like you know, we we all watched the Philadelphia story. We know what the 40s yeah, was. Like. We, we know what it was like. Terrible, and everyone was awful. Everyone was an awful person. And everything That's a good sucked. Film. No, no it's good not. Film. No, it, no, it isn't. You like the seven year rich. You, if you right, you could not comp- you know, you could not be like, yeah, everyone, yeah, it's really bad how they like objectified women. This man's watching seven year rich. Like, I really find this like horrific man funny. It is funny. It's a funny movie. Mm. It's charming. Still digging up old dirt with that. Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> uh point uh let's say point four, racist. It isn't. If yeah, it what, really it, in what sense? It really isn't. In fact, it's <laughs> there's. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not. I'm not the guy to be fighting that battle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> quite, exactly. quite frankly. <laughs> but you know, that's no. Um, and the final point: the evil predatory homosexuals are more of a villain than the goddamn warden. As explained, they're not gay. <laughs> they're not gay. It says the in the movie is... that they're not gay. <laughs> Because you'd have to be human for that. And that I don't even... Yeah, yeah, you have to be human first. And I don't even know if you would say 
they're worse than the warden anyway. They're not worse than the warden. They're not worse. <laughs> not even not even slightly worse than the warden. The warden finds out that Andy might be uh, innocent and murders the only man that would have any evidence against that because he wants him to keep committing tax fraud for him. Yeah, he's worried but, that what, he'll... Co- yeah. yeah, and that lets, you know, to, to make it known that I'm the one in charge, I'll not lock him in a fucking room for two months. The warden's much worse, all right? Yes. <laughs> You're an idiot. So, yeah. Um, half a star. It's not a yeah. bad movie, but my high school English 10 honours teacher named Joseph Goldberg ruined it for me. That doesn't... What? What do you ruin that? He gets out. What do you what? I think we all knew that though as well. It's on the poster. It literally is the poster. What are you talking about? Um, Half a star. I'm utterly depressed by my inability to see this film as anything but a gigantic pile of horseshit. Please feel free to scoff, call me names, unfollow, etc. All right. (laughs) No bed. (laughs) Unfollowed. (laughs) What was the other one? Um. Cobby names, uh, scoff. No, you did it all. You did it all. Oh, okay, good. Sweet. Um, Etc. I guess. Call him a cunt. <laughs> you you you're cunt. A cunt. <laughs> you're a cunt. Um, um, half a start ripoff of that one Rick and Morty episode. You're the Rick and Morty guy out of the two of us. I've, I've, I've seen all of Rick and Morty. I have no idea what they're talking about. All right. Uh, what? I, then, sorry, I'm going to Google this whilst you do another one. And then the final one is half a star, probably the worst Oscar nominated movie ever. Boring, unoriginal, has nothing interesting to say. I hate this movie so much. Well, that's incorrect. Just yeah, interesting well. Incorrect. Oh, there yeah, was no a... Ho- Sorry, I found the Rick and Morty episode they're talking about. Season three, episode one is called The Rick Shank Redemption. Um, yes, that's right. But they're all pun titles, and that is just because he went to prison at the end of season two and he escapes from prison at the beginning of season three. That's but it's right. not yes. it's not a Shawshank Redemption parody. You're a moron. Uh, so- no Hall so- of Fame. No Hall of Fame, but no. I, did like, I did like the cinema was a fucking lie. I, I, I really liked uh, Shawshank Redemption so good. Why did they not make Shawshank Redemption 2? That's a good one. Also, <laughs> that's, that's I hate... That's good stuff. There's, 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 a, there's, a, um, there's a comment chain with the I hate Morgan Freeman and I hate his stupid hat. What, what's the comment chain? Let's have a look. Um, go back to pre-K. I hate you. I hate you and I hate your stupid review. Uh, mad because... <laughs> and then like the last rev- comment on it is just mad because Morgan Freeman is sexier than you. Yeah. I mean, probably. Did he get cancelled? Or oh no, there was like a weird, there was like a weird thing with. Oh Morgan no, no, there. It wasn't was there? Yeah, no, there was like a weird. Uh, it was. I think there was like it was one of those things where like people were like, yeah, it was really like kind of inappropriate with some people. And it's like, oh, it was it like years ago? No, it was during Las Vegas. You uh, remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that movie. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, good in the oh, film. Yeah, well, um, yeah, good movie. It is a really good film. It's a great and, movie. And I and I once again feel like I have to apologize for the really like <laughs> inevitable yeah. like for this episode just becoming a bit like w- me and you fight the delay that just yeah. gets longer and longer and l- <laughs> Absolutely. I mean it's not, uh, at least we got a Tyler Tail out of it. We got the Tyler Tail. We didn't get we didn't get our usual bullshit banter, but I mean they can we, do that we next can, week. We've we, we can do that next time. And what is next week? Oh, my Ooh, God. what a good segue. Uh, but, before, but before that, I don't I know go, if you will. Can't, f- sorry, you can't go, what a good segue. But before, we mo- before I take advantage of that, let me make a completely different fucking point. That's not how segues work, you fucking idiot. It is what I do them, Robbie. <laughs> Wait, because, because, because I was just, I was, no, it's, it's going to work well, because I'm going to go, Lewis, do you have anything to say? Oh, sorry, yeah. And then we're, uh, and then we're back. And then we're back. Okay. So, what, so next week's... Uh, <laughs> sorry. <yeah. laughs> it's worked out really well, actually. I shouldn't have said anything. Apologies. <laughs> so next week... But, I, but, I, but I love the thought of so going, what a great segue. But before we get to that point... Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's, not, a, it's not a segue. <laughs> Just imagine, like, fucking Bradley Walsh... Up, and that's a good segue yeah. lead on to this next bit. But before we get to that point, let me tell you about... <laughs> yeah, commercial break. 
<laughs> so was, the whole point of a segue is the immediate lead into a topic, not like, ah, that's a good one, but before... <laughs> before that, let me tell you this other fucking random thing. Jesus. I was, I was out walking the other day, and then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, the next, next week's one yeah. um, is... Uh, you're down right. We're cracking that golden that that golden egg as we always do. We're doing a oh, Bruce we? Lee film. We're doing Frank a Bruce Lee egg. film next. Crank those views back up. Get <laughs> and and next week we're going money, to be money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because we make we make zero money off this. <laughs> make zero money, but we just like seeing the big view count. Yeah, it's like it's always pence. funny. I've like Angus going to me. Why the fuck do you go from a video that goes from like fifty views to then sixty thousand? I'm like, <laughs> that's Bruce Lee, man. That's the Bruce and Lee I went, effect. And then I went scroll up the Fist of Fury, Angus. He went, why is Bruce Lee such? I was like, I don't know, I don't know. But we we we've only we've only got so much we've only got so much to work with with it. We've only got so much. Mm. And and next week this is, is going to be. Uh, and the next week, next week's uh, episode is going to be on the Big Boss, which was the first Bruce Lee starring film. So, um, mm. yeah, so interesting. Where can I'm, that be I'm found? On my Blu-ray shelf. <laughs> you bitch. Where can, where can oh, that no. be found for a fucking layman? Oh no, it'll be somewhere. Uh, I, 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 I can. I, I mean, you, you can follow the Instagram to find oh. out. When I post I'll about, it, yeah. when I post about, it. so you know, yeah, there's that. Um, but yeah, but before we end, let's reevaluate. Hang on, this would be very interesting from the screen. Are we doing? Are we doing? Yes. Are we doing the, the teams last, again? Yes. Let's reevaluate the teams. Oh, we've got. Some adjustments. This is going to be fun for the YouTube viewers because I'm just screen recording my phone, so you'll see the, you'll see it. Um, so, Robbie, we've oh, got yeah. um, uh, 31 percent of people have said Team Oscar, 38 percent of people have said Team Robbie, and 31 percent have said Team Lewis. Let's see who the additional oh votes. God. Okay, so at least I uh, <laughs> shut up. Um, <laughs> Okay, the additional votes, we've got Sam Clark, still is Team Robbie. He's dead. Canonically uh, dead. He, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's, he's canonically dead. He must have been... He but must have done still, that just before the, right, the guys came right, be, right before... Uh, yeah. fuck, uh, Stuart Hunter is Team Oscar. Uh, and Stu. also... And also we got... Gary Bradshaw is Team Oscar. He did that. He voted. He's like, by the way, Team Oscar burst through the door. Bah, 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 bah. Oh my God. Well, well, maybe they were acting on behalf of Team Oscar then. Hey, all I'm saying is Angus is my right hand man. Yeah. Fuck. Man. Angus, is, Angus is my right hand man. So many, so, so many twists and turns happening here. So many allegiances. It's like fucking Game of Thrones. So we'll see what happens. Sh- <sighs> Can't wait for research Shag Joe Caslin or whatever. Someone has to. Oh, it's not going to be me. Damn it, you leave me alone. (laughs) I was going to say, you choose who I was on about. Yeah, well, that's a shame. Maybe maybe they both need each other more than we think. Uh, Well, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Um, But yeah, we'll... Hey, who knows? Maybe next week's episode might also be via this this uh, method. Who Possibly. Knows? I, might, I might be in another house so I can nick someone's Wi-Fi. I might just stay over in the uni. I might pull a Leonard yeah. to just yeah. nick the Wi-Fi. Do it in the Oakroyd. Just... <laughs> that would... Oh, that's actually not... That's actually a funny shout. That's it's actually a funny, a funny... It's a funny idea. You know what? Maybe later in this season, I might have to go, right, guys, my Wi-Fi is so shit. Yeah. That... That I'm gonna have to pawn off another Wi-Fi. Can I nick the Oakroyd's Wi-Fi to record oh, this go. episode? And then we just have pop-ins every now and then. From that'd like, be great. Hey, who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. But thank you, everyone. My recording says two hours and fourteen minutes. I'll see how much of that gets cut. Yeah, I <laughs> think I it. think this is gonna be like a good time kind of episode. Mm. Mine says two hours yeah. fourteen as well. Yeah. 
and I've and I've got something to talk with you about after we stop recording. So oh, okay, cool. There we go. But anyway, next week is the big boss. We got Bruce, our Bruce Lee, our 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 obligatory our Bruce. Bruce Lee, our, our our Bruce, our obligatory Bruce Lee film that we have to do. Oh yeah. Um, until we run out, and yeah, you can continue. Uh, you can c- continue following us on all social medias and all that jazz. Oh, yeah. Well, all the social medias that we do have, which is uh, Boxed and Instagram. Uh, yeah. you, you can see why I thought the Pope's Exorcist. I didn't really like it that much. <laughs> Spoilers, it's not yeah. good. It's not a good it's, movie. It's, 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 a, it's quite a dull flick, actually. Um, yeah. And then, um, and yeah, and continue following me on Instagram. Uh, follow in- the Intermission Instagram so you can see when another team vote gets put out there. Probably, again, we probably won't do another team vote until like mid, midway through the season, yes. and then until the end. So it's not going to be it's not going to be a weekly scenario. Although or it might it, be fun. It, it just it's just a constant team changing. Just it, it fucks with my scripts real bad. <laughs> Robbie <laughs> needs to like the people keep switching and changing. It really fucks with my stories. All right, so if we could just keep you switching to a minimum, all right. Just just we're staying as it is. Yeah. But um, but next week we'll update you when we um. You know, by the by, of the end of this poll yeah. that's come out, and yep, again, uh, touch wood that this isn't the sign. This episode isn't the sign of what is to come for the rest of the season. God, I but, hope uh, not. But also, when we did, when we could, had a very lovely chat about the film. Oh Love hell it. yeah, man! Very good film. And so next we're time, back, everyone, baby. we should, we're we're back. We're back for twelve straight straight weeks. Yeah, oh, damn yeah. right we are. And. Um, Till next time, guys. Sign is off, Robbie. It's a wrap.